I'd like the brazen giant of Greek fame, with conquering limbs astride from land to land. Here at our sea-washed sunset gate shall stand a mighty woman with a torch, whose flame is the imprisoned lightning, and her name, Mother of Exile. From her beacon hand glows worldwide welcome. Her mild eyes command the air-braced harbor that twin cities frame. Keep ancient land your storied pomp, cries she with silent lips. Give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses yearning to breathe free. The wretched refuse of your teen shore, send these, the homeless, tempest-tossed to me. To my lamp, beside the golden door. I am Ireland. I am Ireland. I am older than the old woman of Bear. Great my glory, I that bore Cúchal and the valiant. Great my shame, my own children that sold their mother. I am Ireland. I am lonelier than the old woman of Bear. And here is the same poem in its own language. Mische Ehre, Mische Ehre, Schinne men an Chaljach Beere, Moor Mogloer, Mederuk Kuchalen Kroge, Moor Manoer, Maglan Fein de Jilla Maier. Mische Ehre, Slim in hell. Slim Greer went to heaven. St. Peter said, Slim, you've been a right good boy. And he winked at him. You've been a traveling rascal in your day. You can roam once more. Then you comes to stay. Put these wings on your shoulders and save your feet. Slim grinned and he speak up, Thank you, Pete. Then Peter say, go to hell and see all that is doing and report to me. Be sure to remember how everything go. Slim say, I be seeing you on the late watch, Bo. Slim got to cavort and swell as you choose, like Lindy in the spirit of St. Louis blues. He flew and he flew till at last he hit a hanger with the sign reading, this is it. Then he parked his wings and strolled around, getting used to his feet on the solid ground. Big bloodhound come a-roaring like Niagara Falls, sicked on by white devils in overhauls. Now Slim wants scared, cross my heart, it's a fact, and the dog went on a-baying some po' devil's track. Then Slim saw a mansion and walked right in. The devil looked up with a sickly grin. Suddenly didn't look for you, Mr. Greer. How it happened you comes to visit here? Slim say, oh, just thought I'd drop by a spell. Feel at home, sir. And here's the keys to hell. Then he took Slim around and showed him people raising hell as high as the first church steeple. Lots of folks fighting at the roulette wheel, like old Rampart Street or Leastwise Beale. Showed him bawdy houses and cabarets. Slim thought of New Orleans and Memphis days. Each devil was busy with a devilish broad. And Slim cried, Lordy, Lord, Lord, Lord. Took him in a room where Slim see the preacher with a brown skin on each knee. Showed him giant stills going everywhere with a passel of devils stretched dead drunk there. Then he took him to the furnace that some devils was firing, hot as hell, and Slim started a mean perspiring. White devils with pitchforks threw black devils on. Slim thought he'd better be getting along. And he say, this makes me think of home, Vicksburg, Little Rock, Jackson, Waco, and Rome. Then the devil gave Slim the big ha-ha and turned into a cracker with a sheriff's star. Slim ran for his wings, lit out from the ground, hauled it back to St. Peter, safety bound. St. Peter said, well, you got back quick. How's the devil? And what's his latest trick? And Slim said, Peter, I really can't tell. The place was Dixie that I took for hell. Then Peter said, you must be crazy, I vow. 
Where in hell do you think hell was, anyhow? Get on back to the earth, cause I got to fear you's a little too dumb for to stay up here. Sometimes a night funeral going by carries home a cool bop daddy. Hearse and flowers guarantee he'll never hype another patty. It's hard to believe, but dead in there, he'll never lay a hype nowhere. He's my ace boy, gone away. Wake up and live, he used to say. Squares who couldn't dig him, plant him now. Out where it makes no diff, no how. I play it cool and dig all jive. That's the reason I stay alive. My motto as I live and learn is dig and be dug in return. You say I okayed long distance? Okayed it when? My goodness, Central, that was then. I'm mad and disgusted with that man now. I don't pay no reverse charges, no how. You say I will pay it else you'll take out my phone? You better let my phone alone. I didn't ask him to telephone me. Roscoe knows darn well long distance ain't free. If I ever catch him, Lord have pity, calling me up from Kansas City just to tell me he loves me. <laughs> Why'd he tell me something I don't know? For instance, what can them other girls do that Alberta K. Johnson can do? And more, too. <laughs> What's that, Central? You say you don't care nothing about my private affair? Well, even less about your phone bill than I care. Mm-hmm, yeah. You say I gave my okay? Well, that okay you may keep, but I sure ain't gonna pay. I worked for a woman. She wasn't mean, but she had a 12-room house to clean. Had to get breakfast, dinner, and supper, too. Then take care of her children when I got through. Wash, iron, scrub, walk the dog around. It was too much. Nearly broke me down. I said, Madam, can it be you trying to make a pack horse out of me? She opened her mouth and cried, Oh, no, you know, Alberta, we love you so. I said, Madam... That may be true, but I'll be dogged if I love you. In time of silver rain, the earth puts forth new life again. Green grasses grow, and flowers lift their heads, and over all the plain, the wonder spreads of life, of life, of life. In time of silver rain, the butterflies lift silken wings to catch a rainbow cry, and trees put forth new leaves, to sing in joy beneath the sky, as down the roadway, passing boys and girls go singing too in time of silver rain, when spring and life are new. Little snail, dreaming you go, weather and rose is all you know, weather and rose is all you see, drinking the dewdrops mystery. When I get to be a composer, I'm going to write me some music about Daybreak in Alabama. And I'm going to put the prettiest songs in it, rising out of the ground like a swamp mist, and falling out of the heavens like soft dew. I'm going to put some tall, tall trees in it, and the scent of pine needles, and the smell of red clay after rain, and long red necks, and poppy-colored faces, and big brown arms, and the field daisy eyes of black and white, black, white, black people. And I'm going to put white hands, and black hands, and brown, and yellow hands, and red clay earth hands in it, touching everybody with kind fingers, and touching each other, naturally do. In that dawn of music, when I get to be a composer and write about Daybreak in Alabama, I, too, sing America. I am the darker brother. They send me to eat in the kitchen when company comes, but I laugh and eat well and grow strong. Tomorrow, I'll be at the table when company comes. Nobody will dare say to me, eat in the kitchen then. Besides, 
They'll see how beautiful I am and be ashamed. I, too, am America. Heaven is a place where happiness is everywhere. Animals and birds sing, as does everything. To each stone, how do you do? Stone answers back, well, and you? Douglas was someone who, had he walked with wary foot and frightened tread, from very indecision might be dead, might have lost his soul, but instead decided to be bold and capture every street on which he set his feet, to route each path towards freedom's goal, to make each highway choose his compass's choice. To all the world cried, hear my voice. Oh, to be a beast. A bird, anything but a slave, he said. Who would be free themselves must strike the first blow, he said. He died in 1895. He is not dead. I've known rivers. I've known rivers ancient as the world and older than the flow of human blood in human veins. My soul has grown deep like the rivers. I bathed in the Euphrates when dawns were young. I built my hut near the Congo, and it lulled me to sleep. I looked upon the Nile and raised the pyramids above it. I heard the singing of the Mississippi when Abe Lincoln went down to New Orleans, and I've seen its muddy bosom turn all golden in the sunset. I've known rivers, ancient dusky rivers. My soul has grown deep like the rivers. Never and never, my girl, riding far and near in the land of the half-stone tales and spelled asleep. Fear or believe that the wolf in a sheep-white hood Loping and bleating, roughly and blithely shall leap. My dear, my dear, out of a lair in the flock's leaves in the dew-dipped year, to eat your heart in the house in the rosy wood. Sleep, good, forever, slow and deep, Spelled rare and wise, my girl ranging the night in the rose and sire of the hobnail tales. No goose herd or swine will turn into a homestall king or hamlet of fire and prince of ice to court the honeyed heart from your side before sunrise in a spinny of ringed boys and ganders bite and burn nor the innocent lie in the rooting dingled wood and staved and riven among plumes my rider weep from the broomed witch's fume you are shielded by fern and flower of country sleep and the greenwood keep. Lie fast and soothed, safe be and smooth from the bellows of the rushy brood. Never, my girl, until told to sleep by the stern bell, believe or fear that the rust shade or spell shall harrow and snow the blood while you ride wide and near. For who unmanningly haunts the mountain ravened eaves or skulks in the dell moon but moonshine echoing clear from the starred well? A hill touches an angel out of a saint's 
fell, the night bird lords through nunneries and domes of leaves, her robin breasted three, three Marys in the rain. Sanctum sanctorum, the animal eye of the wood in the rain telling it beads, and the gravest ghost, the owl at its knelling. Fox and holt kneel before blood. Now the tales praise the star eyes at pasture and night long the fables graze on the Lord's table of the bowing grass. Here most Forever of all, not the wolf in his buying hood, nor the tusk prince in the ruckish farm at the rhymes and mire of love, but the thief as meek as the dew. The country is holy. Oh, bide in that country time. Know the green wood under the prayer wheeling moon in the rosy good. Be shielded by chant and flower, and gay may you lie in grace. Sleep spelled at rest in the lowly house in the squirrel nimble grove. Under linen and thatch and star. Held and blessed, though you scour the high four winds from the dowsing shade and the roar of the left. Cool in your vows. Yet out of the beaked web dark and the pouncing boughs. Be you sure the thief will seek a way, fly and sure and sly as snow and meek as dew blown to the thorn, this night and each vast night until the stern bell talks in the tower and tolls to sleep over the stalls of the half. Stone tales, my own last love, and the soul walks the waters shorn. This night and each night, since the falling star you were born, ever and ever he finds a way as the snow falls, as the rain falls. Hail on the fleece as the veil mist rides through the hay gold stalls, as the dew falls on the wind milled dust of the apple tree and the pounded islands of the morning leaves, as the star falls, as the winged apple seed glides and and flowers in the yawning wound at your side as the world falls silent as the cyclone of silence. Chamber music, one. Strings in the earth and air make music sweet. Strings by the river where the willows meet. There's music along the river, for love wanders there. Pale flowers on his mantle, dark leaves on his hair. All softly playing with head to the music bent, and fingers straying upon an instrument. Two. The twilight turns from amethyst to deep 
and deeper blue. The lamp fills with a pale green glow the trees of the avenue. The old piano plays an air, sedate and slow and gay. She bends upon the yellow keys, her head inclines this way. Shy thoughts and grave wide eyes and hands that wander as they list, the twilight turns to darker blue with lights of amethyst. At that hour when all things have repose, O lonely watcher of the skies, do you hear the night wind and the sighs of harps playing unto love to unclose the pale gates of sunrise? When all things repose, do you alone awake to hear the sweet harps play to love before him on his way? And the night wind answering in antiphon till night is overgone. Play on invisible harps unto love, whose way in heaven is aglow at that hour when soft lights come and go. Soft, sweet music in the air above and in the earth below. Four. When the shy star goes forth in heaven, all maidenly disconsolate, hear you amid the drowsy even, one who is singing by your gate. His song is softer than the dew, and he has come to visit you. O oh, bend no more in reverie when he at eventide is calling, nor muse, who may this singer be, whose song about my heart is falling. Know you by this the lover's chant, tis I that am your visitant. Five. Lean out of the window, golden hair. I heard you singing a merry air. My book was closed, I read no more, watching the fire dance on the floor. I have left my book, I have left my room, for I heard you singing through the gloom, singing and singing a merry air. Lean out of the window, golden hair. Six. I would in that sweet bosom be, oh, sweet it is and fair it is, where no rude wind might visit me, because of sad austerities, I would in that sweet bosom be. I would be ever in that heart, oh, soft I knock and soft entreat her, where only peace might be my part. Austerities were all the sweeter, so I were ever in that heart. Seven. My love is in a light attire among the apple trees, where the gay winds do most desire to run in companies. There where the gay winds stay to woo the young leaves as they pass, my love goes slowly bending to her shadow on the grass. And where the skies a pale blue cup over the laughing land, my love goes lightly holding up her dress with dainty hands. Eight. Who goes amid the green wood with springtide all adorning her? Who goes amid the merry green wood to make it merrier? Who passes in the sunlight by ways that know the light footfall? Who passes in the sweet sunlight with mien so virginal? The ways of all the woodland gleam with a soft and golden fire. For whom does all the sunny woodland carry so brave attire? Oh, it is for my true love the woods their rich apparel wear. Oh, it is for my own true love that is so young and fair.
nine. Winds of May that dance on the sea, dancing a ring around in glee from furrow to furrow, while overhead the foam flies up to be garlanded. In silvery arches, banning the air, saw you my true love anywhere. Well a day, well a day, for the winds of May. Love is unhappy when love is away. Ten. Bright cap and streamers he sings in the hollow. Come follow, come follow, all you that love. Leave dreams to the dreamers that will not after. That song and laughter do nothing move. With ribbons streaming he sings the bolder. In troop at his shoulder the wild bees hum. And the time of dreaming dreams is over. As lover to lover, sweetheart, I come. Eleven. Bid adieu, 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 bid adieu to girlish days. Happy love is come to woo thee and woo thy girlish ways. The zone that doth become thee fair, the snood upon thy yellow hair. When thou hast heard his name upon the bugles of the cherubim, begin thou softly to unzone thy girlish bosom unto him, and softly to undo the snood that is the sign of maidenhood. Twelve. What counsel has the hooded moon put in thy heart, my shyly sweet? Of love in ancient plenilune, glory and stars beneath his feet, a sage that is but kith and kin with the comedian Capuchin. Believe me rather that am wise in disregard of the divine, a glory kindles in those eyes, trembles to starlight, mine, O oh mine. No more be tears in moon or mist for thee, sweet sentimentalist. Christopher Marlowe of Francis Bacon, the author of Lear, remains unshaken. Willie Herbert or Mary Fitton, what does it matter? The sonnets were written. Deep in our subconscious, we are told, lie all our memories, lie all the notes of all the music we have ever heard, and all the phrases those we loved have spoken, sorrows and losses time has since consoled, family jokes, outmoded anecdotes, each sentimental souvenir and token, everything seen, experienced, each word addressed to us in infancy, before, before we could even know or understand the implications of our wonderland. There they all are. The legendary lies, the birthday treats, the sights, the sounds, the tears. Forgotten debris of forgotten years, waiting to be recalled. Waiting to rise before our world dissolves before our eyes waiting for some small, intimate reminder, a word, a tune, a known familiar scent, an echo from the past when, innocent, we looked upon the present with delight and doubted not the future would be kinder and never knew the loneliness of night. Light breaks where no sun shines. Where no seas run, the waters of the heart push in their tide, and broken ghosts with glowworms in their heads, the things of light pile through the flesh where no flesh decks the bone. A candle in the thighs warms youth and seed and burns the seeds of age. Where no seed stirs, the 
fruit of men unwrinkled in the stars, bright as a fig, where no wet is, the candle shows its hair. Dawn breaks behind the eyes, from poles of skull and toe, the windy blood slides like a sea, nor fence nor stakes, the gushers of the sky spout to the rod, divining in a smile the oil of tears. Night in the socket rounds like some pit moon the limit of the globe. Day lights the bone. Where no cold is, the skinning gales unpin the winter's robe. The film of spring is hanging from the lid. Light breaks on secret lots, on tips of thought where thoughts smell in the rain. When logic die, the secret of the soil grows through the eye, and blood jumps in the sun. Above the waste the lockman. The dawn halts. You. Well, no, you're not the far out generation, are you? You kind of, un- kind of. I'm kind of quirky. Okay. The freak out, the flop out, the psych out, the drop out, the black out, the fall out, the conk out, the cop out, the wipe out. The sweat out, the strike out, the sell out are warning the world we should all get the hell out. <laughs> There's one, don't you have one about Nixon? The book is divided up into several parts, uh-huh. and one of them is called uh, Little Drops of uh, Watergate. <laughs> and under that heading. <laughs> I have one called Identity Crisis. Milhouse Ben Nixon in his royal tower awoke one night from a deep dream of power and saw within the moonlight of his room a shadow with a peace plaque glowing in the gloom. He could not discern the form or face, but he knew it was someone from outer space. Some long-haired peacemate, some pinko poet. The weird beard tells it, and the peace words show it. You, cried Nixon, maybe someone from Berkeley or Harvard or uh, Kingdom Come, but to me, you're nothing but a campus bum. Just then, Pat rubs her eyes and wheezes. My God, Dickie, you're talking to Jesus. Papa Ben Adam, may tribe increase, awoke one night from a dream of peace and saw within the moonlight in his room, making it rich and like a lily in bloom, an angel writing in a book of gold, exceeding peace had made Ben Adam bold. And to the presence in the room he said, what writest thou? The vision raised his head, and with a look made of all sweet accord, answered, the names of those who love the Lord. Think you can look it? Get to the wicket. Buy you a ticket. Go! Go by bus, by plane, by car, by train. New York, New York. What they call a sudden melt town. A city of more than eight million people with a million people passing through every day. Some come just to visit and some come to stay. If you scuffle hard enough and you ain't no dunce, you can...
can always get by in New York City. I heard somebody say once, yeah, if you can't make it in New York City, man, you can't make it nowhere. So where do people come to scuffle? Right here. Think you can look it? Get to the wicket. Buy you a ticket. Go! New York, New York. A city so nice they had to name it twice. It may seem like a cold town, but man, let me tell you, it's a soul town. And it ain't a bit hard to find someone who's lonesome or forlorn here. But it's like finding a needle in a haystack to find somebody who was born here. New York, New York. Something else town, all right. East side, west side, uptown, downtown. There's one thing all New York City has, and that's jazz. A while ago, there were cats reading while cats played jazz behind them. There was nothing happening, so the musicians cooked right on like they didn't even mind them. I wrote the shortest jazz poem ever heard. Nothing about hugging, kissing. One word. Listen. Yes, if you pay New York dues, you get New York blues. There's a lot of giving and taking while you're trying to get by. And the building's got something in common with the cost of living. They're both sky high. New Yorkers brag about their buildings being tall. <laughs> as narrow as Manhattan Island is, you go up or nowhere at all. And on one thing you can rely, we got New York's finest. The finest money can buy. Some give a little now and some lean hard. But they're all right in general, as long as you ain't the wrong cat trying to get a cabaret card. So, cats keep on struggling to say their say. But between them and the audience, there sits the DJ. And I'm here, black of acceptance is a drag. People not digging the only thing that's their own, man, that's really in another bag. But lack of acceptance is less like something to hide from and more like something bird died from. Bad morning. Here I sat with my shoes mismated. Lordy mercy, I was frustrated. Bad luck card. Cause you don't love me is awful, awful hard. Gypsy done showed me my bad luck card. There ain't no good left in this world for me. Gypsy done told me. Unlucky us can be. I don't know what poor weary me can do. Gypsy says, I'd kill myself if I was you. Here on the edge of hell stands Holland, remembering the old lies, the old kicks in the back, the old be patient they told us before. Sure, we remember. Now, when the man at the corner store says, sugar's gone up another two cents and bread one, and there's a new tax on cigarettes, we remember the job we never had, never could get, and can't have now because we're colored. So we stand here on the edge of hell in Harlem and look out on the world and wonder what we're going to do in the face of what we remember. Uh, this is Langston Hughes. Many of my poems are poems about the... Negro people in relation to American democracy and about the problems of American democracy in general as applied to race. The um, first poem is called Afro-American Fragment. So long, so far away is Africa. Not even memories alive, save those that history books create, save those that songs beat back into the blood, Beat out of blood with words, sad song, and strange, unnegro tongue. So long, so far away is Africa. Subdued and time lost are the drums, and yet, through some vast mist of race, there comes this song I do not understand. This song of atavistic land, of bitter yearnings lost without a place. So long, so far away is Africa's dark face. This is The Negro Speaks of Rivers, one of my earliest poems written in 1920, just after I came out of high school. 
The way this poem came to be written was that I was going to Mexico to visit my father who lived in Mexico City and on the train going across the Mississippi River just outside St. Louis, I looked out the window and I saw this great muddy river flowing down toward the heart of the south and I began to think about what this river meant to the Negro people, how, in a sense, our history was linked to this river, how in slavery time, my grandmother told me that to be sold down the Mississippi was one of the worst things that could happen to a Negro slave. And then uh, I remembered that I'd read about Abraham Lincoln going down the Mississippi as a young man, and he went on a raft to New Orleans, and he saw human beings bought and sold in the slave markets there, and he was so horrified by this that he never forgot it. And many years later, of course, we know that it was Lincoln who signed the Emancipation Proclamation. And so, uh, as the train went on into the gathering dust, because it had been about sunset when we crossed the river, I took my father's letter out of my pocket and began to write down on the back of his letter this poem, The Negro Speaks of Rivers. I've known rivers. I've known rivers ancient of the world and older than the flow of human blood in human veins. My soul has grown deep like the rivers. I bathed in the Euphrates when dawns were young. I built my hut near the Congo and it lulled me to sleep. I looked upon the Nile and raised the pyramids above it. I heard the singing of the Mississippi when Abe Lincoln went down to New Orleans, and I've seen its muddy bosom turn all golden in the sunset. I've known rivers, ancient, dusky rivers. My soul has grown deep like the rivers. This one is a poem almost as old as the Negro Speaks of Rivers. It was written when I was perhaps 21. It's called Negro. I'm a Negro. Black as the night is black. Black like the depths of my Africa. I've been a slave. Caesar told me to keep his doorsteps clean. I brushed the boots of Washington. I've been a worker. Under my hand, the pyramids arose. I made mortar for the Woolworth building. I've been a singer. All the way from Africa to Georgia, I carried my sorrow songs. I made ragtime. I've been a victim. The Belgians cut off my hands in the Congo. They lynch me now in Mississippi. I am a Negro, black as the night is black, black like the depths of my Africa. American Heartbreak. I am the American heartbreak, rock on which freedom stumps its toe, the great mistake that Jamestown made long ago. Dream Variations. This poem, like the first one that I read, uh, has overtones of Africa. To fling my arms wide in some place of the sun, to whirl and to dance till the white day is done, then rest at cool evening beneath a tall tree while night comes on just... think that rumors is uncivilized and don't know how to behave themselves. Well, I do. I was also raised in a decent home. My mama made us respect our home, and I have never been known yet to wash my socks in no face bowl. So I tore them signs down. The next evening when I come in from work, before I even hit the steps, the landlady yells from the parlor, third floor rear. I said, yes, this is the third floor rear. She says, does you know who tore my signs down in the bathroom and in the hall, also in your room? I said, I tell your signs down, madam. I have been looking at them signs for three months, so I know them by heart. She says, you will put them back or else move. 
I said, I not only tore them signs down, I tore them up. She says, when you have paid me my rent, you move. I said, I will move now. She said, you will not take your trunk now. I said, what's to keep me? She said, your room door is locked and bolted. That's what. I said, lady, I got a date tonight. I got to get in to change my clothes. She says, you'll get in when you pay your rent. So I had to take the money that I've been saving for my date that night, the money I was intending to take Joyce out to the Apollo with and pay up my room rent. The next week, I didn't have enough to move, so I'm still there. Did you put the signs back, I asked. Sure, said Simple. I even read a new sign for her which says, Don't nobody, no time, tear down these signs, else move. Later in the week, on a hot night when I passed through his block, Simple was sitting on his landlady's stoop reading a newspaper by a street light. When he saw me coming, he threw the paper down. Good evening, I said. Good evening, nothing, he answered. It's too hot to be any good evening. Besides, this paper's full of nothing but atom bombs and bad news, wars and rumors of wars. Airplane crashes, murders, fightings, wife whippings, and killings all the way from the Balkans right here to Brooklyn and New York. Do you know one thing? If I was a praying man, I would pray a prayer for this world right now. What kind of prayer would you pray, friend, I asked. I would pray I don't want to have no more wars prayer, and it would go like this. Lord, I would say, I would ask him, Lord, kindly please take the blood off of my hands and off of my brother's hands and make us shake hands clean and not be afraid. Neither let me nor them have no knives behind our backs, Lord, nor up our sleeves. There are no bombs piled out yonder in the desert. Let's forget about bygones. Too many men's and women's are dead. The fault is mine and theirs too, I reckon. So teach us all to do right, Lord, please, and to get along with that atom bomb on this earth, because I do not want that bomb to fall on me, nor thee, nor anybody living. Amen. It was a hot Monday evening. I ran into Simple on the corner of 135th and 7th, and he hailed me, Hey, now. I said, hi, where you been? He said, man, I had a fine weekend. I said, what did you do? He said, me and Joyce went to Orchard Beach. Good bathing? I don't know, he said, I didn't take a bath. I don't take the cold water. Well, what did you do then on the beach? Just lie in the sun? I did not, said Simple. I don't like violet rays tampering with my complexion. I just laid back in the shade while Joyce poured it on the beach, wetting her toes to show off that pretty white bathing suit she's got. In other words, I said, you relaxed. Relaxed is right, said Simple. You know, I had myself a nice, big, cool quart of beer, so I just laid back in the shade and relaxed. I also wrote myself some poetry. Poetry, I said. Yes, said Simple. Want to hear it? Indeed, I do. Okay, I'll read you number one. Here it is. Sitting under the trees with the birds and the bees, watching the girls go by. How do you like it? Is that all? That's enough, said Simple. Well, you ought to have another rhyme, I said. Bye ought to rhyme with sky or something. I was not looking at no sky, as I told you in the poem. I was looking at the girls. Well, anyhow, what else did you write? This next one is a killer, said Simple. This is a serious one. Out there on that beach, I got to thinking about how, if I didn't have to write Jim Crow, I might go down home for my vacation. And I looked around out yonder at Orchard Beach, and 
Almost everybody on the beach besides me and Joyce was speaking Italian or German or Yiddish or Spanish or Puerto Rican or something. Everything but English. So I got to thinking about how any one of them people could visit my home state down south and ride anywhere they want on the trains, except me. That's when I wrote this poem, which I will now read to you. Listen. I wonder how it can be that Greeks, Germans, Jews, Italians, Mexicans, and everybody but me down south can ride in the trains and streetcars and buses without any fusses. But when I come along, me, American as I can be, they got a sign up for me to ride behind, colored. My folks and my folks' folks' and their folks' before have been here 300 years or more. Yet any foreigner from Polish to Dutch rides anywhere he wants to on the train, and he's not subject to such treatments as my fellow men give me in this land of the free. Dixie, you ought to get wise and be civilized. Take down that colored sign for me to ride behind. And then I sign my name, Jesse B. Simple. How do you like that one? Did you write that yourself, or did Joyce help you? Every word of it I writ myself, said Simple. Joyce wanted me to change folks's and say people's, but I didn't have an eraser. It would have been longer, too, but Joyce made me stop and go with her to get some hot dogs. That poem's long enough, I said. It's not as long as Jim Crow, said Simple. You didn't write any nature poems at all, I asked, while you were out there on the, on the beach? What do you mean, nature poems? I mean poems about the great out of doors, about the sea or the flowers or the birds, the trees, the country. To tell the truth, I never was much on country, said Simple. I had enough country when I was down home. Besides, in the country, the flies bother you and the bees sting you and the mosquitoes bite you and snakes hide in the grass. No, I do not like the country. There are too many things that bite, and anything that bites me has to die. Snakes, bed bugs, bees, mosquitoes, or bears, I don't care which. I don't even much like for a woman to bite me, though I would not go so far as to kill her. But of all the things that bites, two is the worst, a mad dog and a snake. But I would take the dog before I would a snake. You know, I never could understand how in the Bible Eve got near enough to a snake to take an apple. Snakes did not bite in biblical days, I said. That was what they call the age of innocence. Well, when Eve got hold of that apple, there wasn't much innocence left. Everything got wrong then. Snakes started to bite women to fight, men to pay in, and Christians to pray in. It were really awful after Eve got that apple. It takes a woman to do a fool thing like that. Well, Adam ate the apple too, didn't he? I asked. You know a woman can make a fool out of a man any time, said Simple. But don't let's start talking about women. We've talked about enough unpleasant things for one night. Will you kindly invite me into the bar to have a beer? This sidewalk is hot to my feet. As a thank you for the drink, the next time I write a poem, I'll give you a copy. But it won't be about the country, neither about nature. As much beer as you drink, it will probably be about a bar, I said. When are you going to wake up, fella? Get wise to yourself. Settle down, marry Joyce, and stop gallivanting all over Harlem every night. You know you're old enough to know better. I might be old enough to know better, but I'm not old enough to do better, said Simple. Listen, I will say you a toast I made up the last time somebody told me just what you're saying now about doing better. You want to hear it? But well, whether you do or not, I'm going to say it. Here goes. Listen fluently. When I get to be 91 and my running days is done... Then I will do better. When I get to be 92 and just can't do, I'll do better. When I get to be 93 
if the women's don't love me, well, then I must do better. When I get to be 94 and can't jive no more, I'll have to do better. When I get to be 95, more dead than alive, it'll be necessary to do better. When I get to be 96, if I don't know no more tricks, I reckon I'll do better. When I get to be 97, on my way to heaven, I'll try and do better. When I get to be 98 and see St. Peter at the gate, I know I'll do better. And when I get to be 99, remembering life were fine, then I'll do better. But even when I'm 101, if I'm still having fun, I'll start all over again, just like I begun. Because what could be better? I'm asking you. What could be better? I looked and I saw that man they called the law. He was coming down the street at me. I had visions in my head of being laid out cold and dead or else murdered by the third degree. I said, oh Lord, if you can, save me from that man. Don't let him make a pulp out of me. But the Lord, he was not quick. The law raised up his stick and beat the living hell out of me. Now, I do not understand why God don't protect a man from police brutality. Being poor and black, I have no weapon to strike back. So who but the Lord can protect me? We'll see. It was yesterday morning I looked in my box for mail. The letter that I found there made me turn right pale. Just a little old letter, wasn't even one page long, but it made me wish I was in my grave and gone. I turned it over, not a word writ on the back. I never felt so lonesome since I was born black. Just a pencil and paper. You don't need no gun, no knife. A little old letter can take a person's life.